Hello there friends, thanks for joining us once again. Did you enjoy seeing these pictures of Kilwinning from a bygone day? Lots of changes and that is something that characterises our world and it characterises us as well. We just need to look in a mirror to see that we're changing. You know we're all very different from what we were yesterday at this time, even if it's only the fact that we are 24 hours older. We're marked by change. The line of the hymn that we were hearing at the beginning of this message was change and decay, and all around I see. But our Bible verse, in contrast with that, reminds us that God is unchanging. In Malachi chapter 3 and at verse 6, we read these words, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. In the book of Malachi, God has been charging his ancient people Israel with their sin and their disobedience and their waywardness. And we read about that also in the book of Nehemiah in chapter 9. Nehemiah, in praying to God, is confessing the sin and the rebellion and the disobedience of the people. And we read at verse 17, and this is wonderful, But you are a God ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abundant in kindness, and did not forsake them. In that past day, God's people changed, and they were no longer faithful to him, but he was faithful to them. Because what, what did we read? I am the Lord, I change not. Again in the book of Malachi, we read in verse 14 of chapter 1, God says, I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts, and my name is to be feared among the nations. And yet, like Israel of old, we ignore God. We disregard his word. We break his laws. We don't show him the reverence he deserves and demands. And yet, God is still faithful. And God is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Israel of old, and we today, deserve to be consumed. We deserve God's judgment because of our sin. But God is long-suffering. And yet, judgment won't be withheld forever. God has promised that judgment is coming. But God is gracious and merciful. And because he is, he sent his Son into the world to provide salvation for the likes of you and me. Isn't that wonderful? And the unchanging God sent his Son into the world and the Son of God, the Lord Jesus, experienced the greatest possible change. He exchanged the highest throne in the universe for Bethlehem's manger. He exchanged the worship of angels for the ridicule and the mockery of evil men. He exchanged the honour of heaven for the shame of the cross. And the one who is the life, he became dead that we might be changed, that we who are dead in trespasses and sins might have eternal life if we believe and trust in him. And if we do repent of our sins and believe the gospel, if we trust the Lord Jesus Christ, we will know a great change. We will know what it is to be turned from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, and will receive forgiveness of sins. We can be delivered from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of God's dear Son. Yes, my friend, the unchanging God sent his Son into the world to die on the cross, to bear the sins of Sinners like you and I, that if we believe and trust in him, we might be changed. We might become God's children and we might be assured of an eternal home in heaven. In a changing world. And I don't need to tell you the world's changing. 
We see it every day in a changing world. We can have a life-changing, indeed an eternity-changing experience through faith in an unchanging God, through believing in the Saviour who is the same yesterday and today and forever. Trust the Lord Jesus Christ today and know the assurance of salvation through faith in him. Thanks again for listening. Bye for now.